it depends on how I do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Just joking. Amen. We acknowledge uh, Mr. President and the whole leadership of CAF. Can we put our hands together for them? <laughs> Because I'm here with my wife, you know, I no, I no longer walk alone, amen. Yeah. Uh, my wife is here, Dr. Zama, she's over there, if you want to appreciate her. I'm also here with my daughter, another doctor, Dr. Nozi at the back there, you can also do it. There she is, praise God. They were here on campus, they served the Lord in campus fellowships and they are doing great things out there. Amen. Amen. If they did it, you can do it too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, that you know the plans you have for us and the thoughts that you think towards us. So God, we submit ourselves even this evening to you. We ask you, Lord, give us seed that we may live. <coughs> As they live during a time of famine, we thank you for the seed of the word. Thank you that your word doesn't just speak into our present circumstances. But thank you, Lord, that your word speaks into eternity. Thank you that your word speaks into where we are going to. And God, thank you that here this evening we are surrounded by greatness. You know the plans you have for each of us. So I pray today, enable us to sow seed that will come in handy where we are going to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We greet the YouTube audience. Amen. Praise <laughs> God. Uh, I told some people at church of prayer now that I'm going to Kev and they said we'll see you on YouTube. I said that's even to realize. Hallelujah. I want us to go to the book of Romans, chapter number 1, verse number 16, and then we're going to read uh, Luke chapter number 4. The president tells me we are dealing with the fundamentals and basics of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Tonight I just want to speak about the gospel. Amen. When we come back, we'll see where the Lord leads us to according to what is planned. Amen. Amen. So I want us to read these two scriptures and then I'm going to say a number of things about the gospel. Can I hear somebody say the gospel? The gospel. Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16 to 17 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is a reason the just shall live by faith. I'm going to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things we can learn from this scripture before I go to what I'm going to. Paul says, number one, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. In other words, I'm not going to overlook it. I'm not going to be shy about it. I will not disregard it. I will not hide it. It seems as if the man is saying, I'm going to be loud when it comes to the gospel. The second thing he says is, he says, of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. So this gospel is about Christ. It also belongs to Christ. It is of Christ. In other words, he is the source of the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Then it says, for it is the power of God. So if you want to know the power of God, there's a good place to know where the power of God lies. The Bible says, they cried out to the Lord in distress. God had heard them. Guess what he did? It says, he sent forth his word and heal their diseases. Praise the Lord. And I know that people look for power in a lot of things. When we see somebody falling, amen, in a service, we say, that's the power of God. When we see somebody doing something dramatic, we say, that's the power of God. Amen. amen. And well, it may be that they are responding to the power of God when that happens, but not everyone that falls is under the power. Amen. Not everyone that shouts is in the power. You know what people define as power varies, but every now and again we must go back to the word of God to see what God ascribes power to or what God calls power. Are you with me? So here Paul says this gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. So if you want to know the power of God, the gospel is the power of God. The next thing he says is, he says it is the power of God to salvation. In other words, the power of God has a purpose. The power of God accomplishes a certain purpose. 
Here he says the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God to salvation. In other words, this gospel has an intended purpose. It has an assignment. Amen. Amen. He says it's the power of God that's released unto salvation. So you and I can already learn there that whenever the gospel is released, somebody is about to be saved. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Yes, I'm talking about being born again. But how many of us know that salvation means more than being born again? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We'll come to that. Praise the Lord. It is the power of God unto salvation. He says first to the Jew, then to the Greek. He is simply saying to those that are, that are learned and to those who may not be regarded as smart. Mm -hmm. Other versions would use languages like uh, uh, the barbarian or the barbaric and whatsoever. Are you with me? He is not, he is not trying to discriminate. He's trying to say it is relevant mm -hmm. to everyone mm -hmm. at every level. It doesn't matter your background. There is no nation, no race, no culture, no level of education that the gospel is not relevant to. Are you with me? Amen. It's the power of God unto salvation for the Jew first and also for the Greek. And then it says, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Now, if you are a Bible reader, you will know that there's the righteousness of man, righteousness according to the law. But it says, in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. Praise the living God. Reminds me of Matthew chapter number 6, 33, when Jesus says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It looks as if you shouldn't just go after righteousness, you should go after the God kind of righteousness. And so he says here, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. In other words, in the gospel, you will discover how righteous God is. Not as though he, he had the capacity to sin. But in the gospel, you will discover how just God is. In the gospel, you will discover how good God is. It speaks, the gospel speaks of his character and actions. It speaks of his equity in character and actions. Are you with me? So in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. So if you want to know God, go to the gospel. Because the gospel has the power to reveal God. It has the power to reveal the character of God. It has the power to reveal the goodness of God. It has the power to reveal the acts of God. You know what, what insurance companies call the acts of God may not be the acts of God. Are you still with me? Yeah. You know when there are floods, people say it's an act of God. But if you go to the word of God, you will discover God has already made a covenant with creation in Genesis and he has said, I will never again do it. So you see the power of the gospel. In the gospel, you will realize, no, that's a lie about God. God never did it. Let's find an explanation elsewhere. What they call natural disasters and are quick to say it's God, may not be God, but you will discover the righteousness of God when you go to the gospel. Are you guys still with me? Amen. Can I hear somebody say the gospel? the gospel? He says, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Isn't it beautiful to know that in the Lord we move from one level to another level. We move from faith to faith. From glory to glory. Then he wraps it up by saying, for it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now let us know what Romans 10, 17 says. It says, but faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you study other versions, they say, but faith comes by hearing the message about Jesus Christ. Hearing the message of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And hearing the message of Jesus Christ comes by the word of God. In other words, if you want to hear the message of Jesus Christ, you've got to go to the word. But hearing the message of Jesus Christ produces faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever the good news of Jesus Christ is declared, amen, faith will arise. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot talk about the gospel without sending everyone to go and study Romans chapter number 10. Mm. 
Amen. Most of us know chapter number 10, 8, verse number 8 to verse number 10, where it speaks about how you get saved. Are you with me? You must believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Amen. For a man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Can I hear somebody say salvation? salvation. We might come back to it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And salvation is not just what happens the day you say yes, Lord, but it starts there. Definitely. But it's bigger than that. Amen. Salvation is a whole package. Whole package. Hallelujah. And you and I must make sure that we take the full salvation package. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. Maybe since we are here, let me speak a bit about it. Amen. Oftentimes when you see it in the New Testament, it's taken from another word. They say it's soteria. Amen. And that word speaks of deliverance. That word speaks of a rescue. Amen. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto deliverance. It's the power of God unto rescue. If somebody needs a rescue, the gospel is the power that God uses to rescue somebody. Are you still with me? Amen. Are you guys good? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. It speaks of wholeness. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto wholeness. Amen. Amen. By just getting a hold of the gospel, you are well on your way to wholeness. A place where you say there's nothing missing and nothing broken. There's total peace in my life. Wholeness. Are you with me? Amen. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. It speaks of healing as well. Healing is part of the salvation package. Amen. Healing is the children's bread. The gospel is the power of God unto healing. Hallelujah. Not just bodily, not just bodily healing. Amen. But healing in every regard. Healing in your body. Healing in your soul. Praise the living God. These are days when people speak of depression. They speak of all sorts of things. I've come to tell you today. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. Amen. That he even uses to rescue even the soul. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. The gospel alone can push you even out of depression. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It can pull you out of hopelessness. It can pull you out of discouragement and put you in a place where you hope again, where you believe again, where you are ready to take on things again. Can I hear somebody say it's the gospel of Jesus Christ? Of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it speaks of rescue. It speaks of safety. It is the power of God unto safety. Hallelujah. It's the power of God unto safety. Hallelujah. So if you fully embrace the gospel, you can sleep at night when others cannot sleep at night. If you fully embrace the good news of Jesus Christ, you can do what he did in the boat. Do you remember when he said, let's cross over to the other side? Amen. Are you with me? You remember that the winds and the waves arose and there was a storm and the boat began to shake and water was starting to pour in. Mm. Have you ever paid attention to the fact that the Bible says Jesus was lying on a pillow? In other words, he didn't fall asleep. He was intentionally sleeping. In the same storm. The same storm that's making others run up and down and think they are going to die is, is a lullaby to Jesus. <laughs> in other words, the gospel can produce rest in you. Rest when others are stressing, when others are running up and down. The gospel can cause you to live in the rest of the Lord. Amen. Peace in the midst of a storm. How many of you know that a storm throws some things up as it tests some things up? The same storm. And I've come to tell you today, if you fully embrace the storm, you will not be putting your hands on your head thinking what will come of me. If you fully embrace the gospel, even when a storm arises, you will be looking for opportunities to rise higher. Because he who promised is faithful. He will say, you go into the other side, you go into the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. So the apostle Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to walk out of this place today saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to ignore the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will not be ignorant of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will not disregard 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? It is the power of God unto salvation. And that salvation is my healing. It's my rescue. It's my deliverance. It's my wholeness. It's my safety. It's my peace in the midst of the storm. And there's more we can say about it. Hallelujah. It's my justification. It's my relationship with God. It's my future that is now secure. Praise the Lord. It's a whole package. It's the blessing that is upon me. Hallelujah. It's a whole package. So the man says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. This power. You know, Ecclesiastes says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Mm. Amen. God is the king of kings. Mm. King of the universe. If kings, kings don't rule through their energy. Kings rule by their words. Yes. And God rules by his word. That's why he sent forth his word and healed their disease. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? Amen. When a man had backslidden and was out of order and needed a rescue, God still sent forth his word. I'm speaking John 1 now. In the beginning was the word. And the word, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because he rules by his word. Isn't it good to know that the word of God is not just written, it's not just revealed, it's not just spoken, it is living and it's a person. Amen. It is spirit and it is life. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you guys with me? So let's go to Luke chapter number 4, verse number 18 to 19, then I'm going to say a few things, then we will pray. Somebody say the gospel. The gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you hear people saying, I want that all time gospel. Because there's a new gospel, or there's a gospel of prosperity, or there's a gospel of whatsoever. I don't know where they get that from. Because when I go to the Bible, I only find the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you the different ways and words that are used to express the gospel. It's not like God has many gospels. It's the same gospel with different expressions, but it all forms part of the package. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's a key thing, underline it. Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Number two, because He has anointed me to preach. Amen. The gospel to the poor. Other versions will help us understand what the gospel is there because they will say, He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Hallelujah. Do I have some people that are passionate about evangelism? Evangelism is not bad news. Do I have some people that are passionate about the prophetic? Hallelujah. The prophetic doesn't just pronounce doom and gloom. It pronounces the good news of Jesus Christ in the midst of whatever storm. Are you still with me, somebody here? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God doesn't just tell you how bad things are. God tells you what he has done about that to overcome every bad and all evil. So prophecy that is from God should encourage, it should exhort, it should comfort. Amen. It should strengthen. It shouldn't just tell you what you did badly yesterday. It should lift you up. Jesus went down to lift people up. He never left anyone downcast. Are you with me? And that's the gospel. Somebody say that's the gospel. That's the gospel. So when you stand up to preach, preach the gospel. But remember, you are preaching the gospel. Don't tell us how horrible people are. Tell us the good news of Jesus Christ. And when you announce the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news is able to go into any mess and produce amazing results. Why? It's the power of God unto salvation. There was a woman who was in a bad state. But she met up with Jesus in John chapter number 4. She had an encounter with Jesus, that woman at the well. By the time Jesus was done with her, she was standing upright. She was bold enough to go to her city and confront those she was avoiding and evangelize to them. She told them the good news. The Bible says they believed because of her word. Then when they saw Jesus, they believed for themselves in him. Are you with me? That's the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. The gospel is a lifter. 
The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Somebody say God's power, God's power. Unto, salvation. unto salvation. So look. For verse 18, we're still reading. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach. Now, to preach is to declare and to show. I'd like to define it that way. Amen. Preaching reveals things, it shows people what they could not see before. Preaching is not just making noise. Amen. But there's a declarative aspect to preaching. But powerful preaching is not loud preaching. Power has nothing to do with volume. Amen. Some of us, when someone is loud, we say this one is power. <laughs> but today we are, we are identifying the real power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of the most powerful preachers that I really love don't even shout as I shout. They just talk. But if you are listening very well, some good news is really released in there that liberates completely. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Amen. It's important for me to say these things because what we call powerful may not be what God calls power. Amen. So we must go back and define powerful according to God. You can be loud and not powerful. Amen. Just loud. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's just like worship is not necessarily the slow song. <laughs> Let's leave that alone. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying we must go back to the word to define things. Hallelujah. And not use what people have already done. You know what we do. Amen. Now saints we're gonna go into a time of worship. We mean now we are slowing down the songs. <laughs> Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It may be slow, it may be fast. In fact, worship may not even be a song. Because worship is bigger than a song. Amen. But a song can be used to worship. Amen. So we must go back to the word to say, God, teach us your ways. Mm. We don't just want a religion, nor do we want a form of religion. We want the truth, and the truth sets free. Somebody say amen. amen. So it says, he says, yeah, he has anointed me. He has rubbed me with his spirit, rubbed me with his ability. I'm no longer doing it in my ability. I'm doing it in his ability. Hallelujah. Mm. To preach the gospel to the poor. Do you see how powerful the gospel is? Jesus says, I'm going to take the gospel to the poor. Jesus, why aren't you saying, I, I've come to give money to the poor? It's as if we can learn from Jesus that the gospel is truly the power of God unto salvation. Because even if you give it to a poor man, it has enough power to lift that man out of that place and deliver them into a better place. I'm talking about the pure gospel, unadulterated. It's a life changer. It's a game changer. It's the power of God for real change. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the power of God for real change. I know sometimes we look for things like, Pastor, Pastor, put your hands on me. My life will never be the same. That, that's possible. Amen. But there are other ways. There's a more excellent way. Yeah. Amen. If I lay my hands on you, it may work for you for a day. But if I take you to the source... Amen. The word of God. If I drop you in the desert, you will be Hallelujah. I always tell people, if I were to give anyone anything, I would give them the word of God. I would give them prayer. I would give them the Holy Ghost. I would give them a relationship with God. With those things in place, add on to that fellowship with other believers. Even if they drop you in a dry place, you will do well. Amen. You will turn a desert into a place of abundance Amen. if you have those things in place. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Mina, I will lay hands on you day one. I'll lay hands on you day two. Day three, I'm going to close you in a room and lock the door and say, read the Bible and pray. Because <laughs> what's on me belongs to you as well. I said, what's on me is yours as well. I'm a child of God as you are a child of God. There's nothing that makes me extra special because I'm preaching. I'm preaching the same gospel that's available to you. It achieves results for me, can achieve results for you. Hallelujah. Because God is no respecter of persons. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. So he says, he anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, sent me to heal the broken hearted. Look at that healing. To proclaim liberty, freedom, amen, to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. Amen. I want us to do some definitions, then I'll be out of your way. Amen. My time is limited. Hallelujah. So let's define the gospel. The gospel is the good news. Amen. It's good news. Go check it out. Study it in different versions of the Bible. If it's the true gospel, it is good news. Hallelujah. Amen. That means you have a right to smile in the presence of God. Amen. Did you know that the measure of deep prayer is not frowning? <laughs> but sometimes we frown because I mean we are really in it. Hallelujah. But prayer is not frowning. You can pray with a smile. Amen. But other people may think you are not serious if you smile. Yeah. Amen. But where did we learn how to do all these other things? Are you with me? Worship is not frowning. Amen. But you may frown because of the intensity of the moment. Are you with me? But it doesn't mean we know you are a worshiper because you are frowning. Somebody say the gospel is the good news. So you and I are bearers of good news. We are custodians of good news. When people are sick, we are entrusted with good news. And the good news is there's healing in Jesus' name. Amen. When people are downcast, we are bearers of good news. And the good news is there is a lifting. Job says when men are cast down, you will not say men are cast down. You will say there's a lifting. Hallelujah. Where people have no hope, you will tell them we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where people want to give up, you will tell them be strong and take courage. Hallelujah. Because we are bearers of good news. Can I hear somebody shout the good news of Jesus Christ? So the gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we go on missions, hallelujah, we must make noise about the good news of Jesus Christ. You don't have to die in sin. God has paid the penalty. Somebody has taken your place. Hallelujah. You need to tell somebody it's not God that condemns you. It's the devil that condemns you. God does not condemn God convicts unto repentance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I hear somebody shout, good news? Hallelujah. You and I must go and declare good news. He forgives you. Remember the woman who was caught in the very act? And Jesus, amen, looks at her accusers. Jesus kneels down to write after asking them if any of you is guiltless, cast the first stone. When Jesus gets up, the accusers are gone. That's what Jesus does to the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And when Jesus gets up, he says, neither do I condemn you. He says, go your way and sin no more. In other words, in Jesus we find forgiveness. In Jesus we find life anew. Amen. Amen. We turn a brand new page. When the Bible says we are born again, it means we are really born again. Disconnected from the former. Connected to the new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's not poetry. That's reality. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In other words, as a child of God, I am new inside. Disconnected from a bloodline that works against me. Connected to a bloodline that works for me. A bloodline that declares Passover. A bloodline that declares there's no dead here, Passover. A bloodline that says to sickness, Passover. A bloodline that says to poverty, Passover. A bloodline that says to the curse, Passover. A bloodline that says to confusion, Passover. A, are you hearing what I'm saying? We are going towards Easter and Jesus is our Passover. And the good news is child of God. Because of Jesus, you don't have to accept what everyone accepts. You can declare because of the good news, Passover. Amen. That's in your Bible. Amen. 
the blood that declared Passover when destruction was coming that they had to put on their doorposts. It declared when the angel of death was passing, he could not demolish in those houses. I've come to declare to you, whatever may be happening in this realm has no right in your life if you understand the good news of Jesus Christ. You can look at anything in its face and say in the name of Jesus, pass over. Hallelujah. Amen. Get into the good news to know your covenant right and privilege. You've got to know, you've got to know. I hear what I'm saying? When a policeman steps into the road, clad in his uniform, yeah. even if he may look small, even if he may look like he's a bit sick, even if he may look like he's not all that strong, as long as he has that uniform on mm. and steps into the road, even if he may not be so tall like me, and if he steps into that road, even if you look at him and you feel like this boy, as long as he comes in the cover of that outfit that represents the whole law of the nation, when he raises up his hand, it doesn't even if your car has lost its brakes, you find a way for it to stop. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? I come to tell you today, child of God, this gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ that gives you the authority to step up to any giant, step up to any situation, and step in because you know your power is not in your stature, your power is not in your background, your power is in the one that has gone before you. The one that declares you more than a conqueror because he conquered everything. Yeah. So you can tell everything pass over. Mm. Pass over. Winter is coming. I don't have any flu plans. Yeah. I don't. I don't. And it's been a couple of years now. Yeah. Every time it comes, I tell it, here's my flu shot. I will not be sick this winter in Jesus' name. That's my flu shot. You can take the others, amen, and I mean the doctor is here, praise the Lord, amen. You can take the others, they are okay as well. But when you get to know the good news of Jesus Christ, you will also get to know your covenant rights and privileges as a child of God. God says, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Because you reject knowledge, it says, so dear, I will also reject you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the living God. So know the gospel, know the good news, know what's been said about Hallelujah. So the gospel is the good news. Somebody say it's the good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My time is almost up. You will find the gospel expressed with these words in the Bible. You will hear the Bible say it's the gospel of Christ. Romans chapter number 1, verse number 16. Mark chapter number 1, verse number 1. See, now I'm going to get you an audience because we're going to close the scriptures here. Praise the Lord. They can't write fast enough. Oh, man. I'm working with you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible will also call it the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the ends. It's the good news of the kingdom. But who is the king of this kingdom? Jesus Christ himself. Are you with me? Matthew 34, 14. Amen. The gospel is also called the glad tidings of good things. Guys, God has something to say to us about good things. Amen. Jesus doesn't just save your soul and your spirit only. Jesus also brings good things in your life. Somebody say things. things. Don't, make, don't allow people to make you apologize for good things. Jesus died for everything. Let me tell you something. When Pharaoh was supposed to release the Israelites, when he was busy resisting, at some point he says, okay, you can go, but leave your wealth behind. Leave your livestock behind. And Moses must stand before him and say, we are not leaving anything, not even a hoof. Amen. In other words, we are not even leaving, no, not even the smallest of things. We are taking everything that belongs to us because we need it to worship God. So Jesus doesn't just save you only. He says, oh, I made it, but my wealth didn't make it. <laughs> Jesus saves you completely and you bring your wealth in because we must fund people to go preach the gospel. We must buy things and make a difference for the kingdom. So you are not doing anyone any favor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you keep on, uh, if you put aside all these other things, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Put it aside in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he rescues us completely. 
He saves you, saves your career, saves your business, saves your family, saves your gift, saves everything that's got to do with you. Amen. And how many of you know once you have yielded it all to him, the road that was Moses's or the road that was Aaron's will eventually be called the road of God. Hallelujah. For so everything, everything. For me is what I save my cat and my dog. Everything that's connected to me is when I experience the blessing of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because God can use anything. You guys think I'm joking. Yeah. I have a friend that bought a house because of his dog. When he was, yeah, I'm going to bring him something. When he was believing God for a house, his dog, Rottweiler, two of them got lost. They disappeared. He was a living space saying, God, I'm believing you for this house. I've, I've seen the kind of house I want in pictures. Dogs could not be found for days. And when the, he put up announcements in the city, and when, when somebody picked up the announcements, this, this, this person calls and says, I think I have dogs at my place that look like your dog. When he gets to that house, he says, oh my Lord, this is the kind of house that I really am believing you for. Long story cut short, he lives in that house. You see, we serve a limitless God. He will use anything. Please don't come out of here and say, Pastor Banana said, God saves dogs. But I said, all creation <laughs> is open to the mighty works of God. Are you with me? For the gospel is glad tidings of good things. Romans 10, 15. The gospel is also called the gospel of peace. Romans 10, 15. Amen. I'm going to wrap it up here. Hallelujah. I've already said the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So don't play with that gospel. That's powerful stuff you are working with. Amen. Amen. Other people are moving from nothing to prominence with the same gospel. So don't play scripture of the day with it. Meditate on that thing. Keep it before you. Become one with it. The result it will deliver for you are amazing. And they can affect any area of your life. Are you with me? Amen. Bible says, by it we are saved. Amen. Romans 1.15. The gospel is the word of truth. It is the word of God. Ephesians 1.13. 1 Peter chapter number 1.25. The gospel is the good news of salvation. Amen. Ephesians 1.13. Amen. The gospel is also called the everlasting gospel. Hallelujah. So this gospel is not temporary. It's everlasting. His blood will never lose its power. Our covenant with God is forever. His word will never fade. Heaven and earth will fade, but his word will remain. The grass withers, the flower fades, but his word abides forever. Are you with me? So when you deal with the gospel, you are dealing with forever material. Are you with me? When you interact with the word, you are not interacting with something you'll be with in this life only. You are interacting with eternal material. So moments in the word are moments in eternity. Amen. Topic for another day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? The gospel is also the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Amen. It's the good news of the glory of God. Hallelujah. The gospel is also the gospel of the glory of Christ. That's 1 Timothy 1.11, also 2 Timothy, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 4. Hallelujah. Mm. I like to say Christ is the gospel himself. Mm. Amen. The gospel is really the person it speaks about because Jesus embodies the gospel. He is the embodiment of the gospel. And we are preaching today to this end that even you and I may be the embodiment of the gospel. Your family needs to look at you and say, look at the goodness of the Lord. Your colleagues need to look at you and say, God saves and say, God heals, God delivers, God restores because we are ambassadors. Are you with me here today? I think we will drop it here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on somebody say the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout that's the power of God. Tell to your neighbor say that's powerful stuff on your phone. Amen. Tell to your neighbor say that's powerful stuff that you keep hearing when you come to care. Hallelujah. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Tell to the person behind you say that's powerful stuff. Hallelujah. Those pages of your Bible, those are pages of power. Pages of power. I want to conclude by sharing a testimony. 
So God opens doors for us to go and minister like this. There's a scripture in Hebrews chapter number 4 too that says, The word was preached to them and to us. But the word didn't benefit them not being mixed with faith in their hearts. If we have a chance to come back, we will talk about how we should interact with the gospel. This powerful material. So one day I had been preaching in a conference. A year later, I'm invited to the same conference. I meet up with a woman who works in the Attorney General's office in Botswana. And she says, remember the message you preached at that conference? I'm like, uh, which one? <laughs> and then she says, I just want to tell you, from that message, I've started a business that's doing so well. The question is, what are you doing with the Word of God? Some of us, all we ever do with the Word of God is say hallelujah. <laughs> say it again, my brother. That's powerful. Amen. Some of us, all we ever do with it is write it down. But let me tell you something. The Bible says you shall know the truth. Know the truth. The key word is know. Become one with the truth. Be intimate with the truth. Personalize the truth. Amen. Deep with the truth. And it says, and the truth shall set you free. God's word is full of opportunities. Opportunities. Somebody's car is going to come out of the same message you heard and their lives will never be the same. Listen to me. It's not the number of books about the word that you have that will make a difference. It's the books you actually read and internalize and get what God is saying about that word. It's not the number of preachings you've heard. It's the number of preachings you hear and you make an issue of your life and pray over them and become one and suck the life out of them that will count for you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's lift up our hands and talk to the Lord in this place today. That's the gospel of Jesus.